Welcome aboard and uh, welcome back. Uh, last time we looked at installation and some basic calibration. We also looked at uh, the three screens on the, one of the first pages. Um, the location screen, the weather screen and the date and time screen. Today I want to look at um, METARS, that's Meteorological Aerodrome Reports and learn about them and how to decipher them and also uh, use those to help uh, learn a little bit more about those three screens in particular the the weather screen so here is a typical METAR as you can see it's uh, split up into different blocks the first block is the station identifier it's the ICAO code uh, which stands for International Civil Aviation Organization um, the first letter of the code is the continent, which in this case you can see is Europe. The second letter typically is the country, which is Great Britain in this case. And then the last two letters actually signify the um, station uh, or the aerodrome. And in this case it's uh, Presswick. So the second block shows the date and time of observation. Uh, the first two numbers uh, signify the day of the month, so that's the 9th. And then the rest shows the actual time um, in Greenwich Mean Time, Zulu. So on this uh, occasion, it was on the 9th at uh, 9.50 in the morning. So the third block shows the uh, wind direction and speed. Um, and ob observation is typically a um, snapshot of the weather at the time of the observation. However, in this case, it's uh, the mean wind direction and speed. Um, taken over the 10 minutes previous to the observation being taken. So you can see the first three numbers uh, is the wind direction. That's 240 degrees and that's from true north. And uh, the wind speed is actually 12 knots. It's helpful to understand that the wind uh, direction is the direction the wind is coming from. And so that might help you to decide what runway you would want to use to take off into. The fourth block uh, shows visibility and it's measured in meters. Uh, on this occasion it's uh, four nines, uh, generally called all the nines, which means the visibility is greater than 10,000 meters. Uh, in the next example we're going to see something uh, where there's a, a moderate shower and um, we have 6,000 in this place which shows it's 6,000 meters. This block shows the uh, weather at the time of the observation. It's a, a code. Uh, this can cover many different types of weather. And um, on this occasion, I'm just going to talk about this one. If you're interested in learning more about meteorology and all the different codes, um, I could do a video on that. I used to work for the Met Office for a period of time as a weather observer. And so know a little bit about it, I'm not an expert, but uh, I can offer some insights. But in this occasion, what we it's showing is a slight shower of rain. The slight is indicated by the minus sign at the beginning. Uh, if there was nothing there, then it would be a moderate shower of rain. And if there was a plus, it would be a heavy shower of rain. So basically a, a shower. Uh, and on this occasion, it's a shower of rain rather than a shower of snow or uh, other different types of precipitation that you can get. So the next block or blocks, um, because there can be several, covers cloud, um, cloud height and uh, the amount. The amount is signified by the uh, three letter code words at the beginning of the blocks. And so before we go into decoding these ones, I think we need to cover that area. So as a means to estimate how much cloud there are uh, there is in, in a particular level 
um, we divide the sky up into eights, uh, which is called what are called uh, octas. So if we felt that half the sky was covered with a particular type of cloud, then that would be four eights uh, or four octas. And if we felt a, a quarter of the sky was covered with a particular type of cloud, then that would be uh, two eights or two octas. So the meter describes the amount of cloud in code words, uh, namely few, as we saw. Uh, SCT, uh, which stands for scattered. BKM, which stands for broken. And OVC, which stands for overcast. Uh, the significance of these codes in relation to amounts of, um, amounts of cloud or octas is um, few is one to two octaves, so one to two eighths. Um, if we felt the amount of cloud at a certain level was three to four eighths or three to four octaves, then that would be called scattered. If we felt so we felt um, it was five to seven eighths or five to seven octaves, that would be broken. Or if we found, felt that the uh, cloud at that certain level covered the whole sky, then that would be um, overcast, eight octaves. So you've got to remember what we're actually describing is each cloud layer, uh, not the whole sky. And that's why there are several blocks. The reason why um, several blocks are reported is because only a s significant layers are, are described. Um, significant layers are defined as the lowest cloud base of an email or type below 5,000 feet, and that's above ground level. The next uh, lowest cloud base of three octaves or more, again below 5,000 feet. And the next lowest cloud base of five octaves or more, again below 5,000 feet. In addition to that, we also um, report cumulonimbus and towering cumulus. But again, that's getting into areas that where I need to perhaps do a bit more on meteorology with you. So let's now go back to our METAR and see if we can uh, now decipher it. So now looking at our METAR blocks, we can see the first is few at 900 feet. Uh, few being one or two octaves, and that'd be the lowest cloud. And 900 feet will be 900 feet uh, above ground level. Uh, the second uh, significant cloud layer is scattered. So that's three or four octaves, and that's uh, 2000 feet above ground level. What these blocks don't actually tell you is the uh, the type of cloud or the, the cloud tops. So the next block shows us um, temperatures, two temperatures uh, measured in degrees C. The first temperature is um, the actual temperature uh, as measured on the thermometer. And the second temperature is what is called as dew point. Uh, dew point is the temperature at which air becomes saturated. So uh, we would expect, if these two numbers were the same, to be seeing um, mist or, or even fog. And finally, the, uh, the last block is the uh, Q&H, um, which is measured in uh, millibars. Uh, Q&H is the mean sea level barometric pressure uh, using the international standard atmosphere. Uh, that's all you need to know, really, for the, for the moment. If you wanted to know more about that, then that would be covered in... Um, a lesson on meteorology. So let's uh, now look at uh, our other example uh, and try to put into practice what we've just learned. So the first block um, EGNJ is the station identifier for Humberside. Second block is uh, date and time, so it's the 9th. And this was actually done at 1020 Zulu, 1020 GMT. The second block is uh, wind, and this occasion it's slightly different. Here we're actually reporting um, a gust. So you remember that um, wind direction and speed is actually the mean wind direction and speed uh, for the 10 minutes previous to the observation being taken. If during that time uh, there's a gust of wind 10 knots or more above that mean wind speed then that then is reported as a, a gust and this is how it's uh, shown in the code so here we have uh, 
240 degrees 23 knots is the mean wind speed and direction and then with a gust of 33 knots. Moving on to the next block, um, uh, if you remember last time we had all the nines which is 10 kilometers or more, this time it's uh, 6,000 meters and that's probably due to the uh, next block which is uh, a moderate shower of rain. Uh, I don't know if you remember last time it was just a slight shower. So now we've got a moderate shower of rain and that's obviously impacting on the, the visibility. Next, uh, we've got our uh, cloud blocks. So here we have a few at 1,900 feet. So that's one or two octaves. And then broken at 2,500. So that's uh, uh, five to seven octaves uh, at 2,500. And next we have our temperature, so that's uh, 9 degrees and the dew point is 6 degrees. And finally the Q&H here is 1002 millibars. So what we'll do now is uh, use this example to uh, set up um, three screens. That's the location, weather and date and time on X-Plane 11. Okay, so here we are on X-Plane 11. And uh, let's see if we now can apply that to meet our, uh, to the three screens that we looked at uh, last time. So the first block of the METAR, as we, we've learned, is the station identifier. And we can put that into the location section here. So EGNJ brings up Humberside Airport. And we can customise that and find a particular place on the air if we want to put our aircraft. So I think we'll put it just there on the southern apron. And we'll click confirm. The next block is the uh, day and time which is uh, the, the bottom screen here. We'll click on customize. It's March and it'll be the 9th so we we'll click on 9 and the hour was 10.20. That's already on here and Zulu so it's uh, not offset from GMT which makes it Zulu and we we'll click done. So now we'll move on to the uh, weather screen. So we we'll click on customize and we want to manually configure it. So we we'll press manually configured. And I like to clear the screen off. So we start with a clean slate. So we just click on these different things here and click delete. Just like so. And finally, and so we want to start with the, the wind layer. So we click add wind layer and this is going to be at uh, ground level so we're going to reduce this to zero so you can see it says zero feet above ground level but interesting it actually says 121 feet above mean level sea level so that actually is the height of um, Humberside above mean sea level so you can see that um, Xplan 11 has all that data in its uh, in its programming uh, we then go on to the wind direction you can move the arrow around or you can click on the little box here and put in the 240 and make sure you press enter and then that um, uh, inputs the, 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 the right data. We then got uh, 23 knots again you can use the slider or you can use the little box here so I should put 23 and press enter. We're not sure about turbulence and uh, we're not sure about wind shear but we do know there's a gust of 33 knots so this uh, so don't put 33 in here this is actually the increase above the mean speed uh, mean speed so we've got an increase of 10 knots above mean speed so we put in 10 here and press enter and just to confirm we've got everything right we can look down here 240 degrees at 23 knots gusting 33 knots so that's our wind done we now move on to the uh, next block which is visibility which is over here make sure it's in kilometers not in statute miles and we want to make that six kilometers or six thousand meters next we've got a moderate shower of rain so there's no um, method on here of actually inputting weather 
but um, what we do know is that we've got a, a moderate precipitation so we can move that block to to moderate and we can also at the same time fill in this runway conditions on the bottom so we can assume that um, the runway is going to be wet and it's going to be uniform rather than patchy as it's a, a, a shower coming through okay well, so now we're going to put in our cloud layers because we've already entered um, there's some precipitation x-plane 11 has obviously put some uh, cloud for that uh, precipitation to come from but um, so that needs um, adjusting because that's not the right amount so we want few cumulus or few and the height is 1900 and don't forget um, Humberside is 121 feet above mean sea level so we need to add that uh, to get the right the height above ground level uh, so if we had 1900 uh, to 121 we get 2021 so we write that in there two zero two one and press enter and just to make sure our maths is correct are correct that should now say 1900 feet above ground level which it does the next uh, cloud layer was uh, broken at uh, 2500 so we need to add a, another cloud layer and we'll make that broken cumulus and this time it was 2500 again don't forget to add that 121 so that's uh, 2621 and press enter and we just check our maths that's 2500 feet above ground level again we don't need to worry about the tops um, we're not given that information so here we are we have um, few and broken cumulus so now moving on to the the next block we've got um, temperature uh, there's no method of entering a dew point, dew point on here but we can enter the temperature so it's in degrees centigrade and we click on there that's nine degrees and the next block it's um q and h 1200 that's in hectopascals difficult to say or millibars um so and we click on there and put in 1000 and two um we don't know about thermals we'll bring that down to zero climb rate coverage so i think that's it so i think we've got um a wind two four zero degrees 23 knots gusting 33 um we've got a few at um 1900 broken at 2500 uh, got visibility of six kilometers uh, moderate shower temperatures nine q and h 1002 and a wet, wet runway and we press done so all we have to do now is press start flight so here we are in a uh, wet humberside i changed my mind and decided to change the aircraft to the 737 um, so we've got our cloud we've got um, the rain the visibility as you can see um, uh, degrades into the distance there and uh, so I think uh, it's pretty accurate to, to our meter next time I want to have a look at uh, some of the settings up here and um, also I'd like to look at um, graphics and have a look at setting those up and give some advice um, and also some of these other things that we might find useful so from a miserable uh, humble side uh, say goodbye and um, hope to see you uh, next time